Another very important foundation of our faith is water baptism. If we understand what we've said so far, then the consequence of our spiritual rebirth of the fact that we are a new creation is being baptized in water. And we're going to read from Mark 16, verse 16. I would like to um, show you the very essence of baptism because this can bring many changes to you. Even if you have already been baptized, uh, this can change a lot in you. So Mark 16, 16 says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. So first thing, we need to understand that baptism is not necessary for us to go to heaven. This verse clearly says, listen again, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. And we have here the Greek word sozo that is translated as saved. And uh, sozo doesn't just mean going to heaven. The meaning of sozo is generally a rescue. Therefore, we should read this verse as follows. He who believes and is baptized will be rescued. And this word sozo contains a wider area, idea of rescue. There is rescue from hell there, but also rescue from sickness, rescue from poverty, rescue from loneliness, rescue from breakdown, etc., etc. Any sort of rescue. This Greek word sozo is usually translated as salvation. It can be a difficult concept for many people, though. Try asking someone in the street, are you saved? And they will look at you weird, like it's absurd. Here it is written, he who believes and is baptized will be rescued. Now, the second part of this verse, but he who does not believe will be condemned. It doesn't say, but he who does not believe or does not get baptized will be condemned. So, baptism is not necessary for us to become citizens of God's kingdom. We don't need it to be in heaven. Why do we go to heaven? Because our sins have been forgiven. Jesus Christ died for us and that's it, period. We see that on the cross, next to Jesus, there is one thief who is dying and he clearly repents. We can see it. How do we see it? How do we see he repents? He repents by saying to the fellow thief next to him, we have deserved this. So he recognizes his sin and then he says, but him, and he says to Jesus, when you come to your father, so he recognizes Jesus as the Messiah, remember me. Look, in this simple confession, the guy turns to Jesus and it is his conversion. He pleads, remember me. Jesus says, assuredly, I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. This man did not get baptized, right? He had no chance. Clearly, baptism does not cause us to go to heaven. So, what is the deal with the baptism? We see that the baptism is a command. In the same verse, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. Then, at the end of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus says, Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So this is a command. Many people ask, but do I have to get baptized? Well, have you even considered such a thing as respect towards God? Well, yes. Okay, did God tell you to get baptized? In his word? Yes. So get baptized. But in my opinion, well, stop it, I say. You have to repent from having your own opinion. If God said to me, Arthur, I would like you to start now walking upside down. It will not be easy, but I already know I am able to do it by faith. I know this. I would say, Father, thank you that 
I will be walking upside down. I don't know how I will do it, but from today I am going to begin to use grace in order to train myself to walk upside down. I receive it by faith and soon I will be recording my teaching standing upside down, okay? Because I have been led to do this. If this could be a way for me to get hold of some part of Sozo, I will do it. If God said to me, Arthur, by means of standing on your head, you will achieve some part of Sozo, because that is the way to get there upside down, I would say, yes, sir. You understand? I repeat, I am not the Lord of my life. Do you know, by the way, it is very good to have a Lord? because then you don't have to make so many decisions. They, many have been made for you, so you can just plug into that. You don't need to get all tense. I can just repeat after him, like a parrot, I am relaxed, you know, I like to have a stronger person next to me. Praise God the Almighty, God is stronger than me, I cling to him, and it's awesome. So he said we should get baptized. We see it's a command. In Acts chapter 2, verses 37-38, we can see Apostle Peter, after his baptism in the Holy Spirit, he turns from being fearful to being bold. He stands up and preaches a powerful sermon. And we read, he says, now, when they heard this, when they heard Peter's preaching, that is, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Do you know what this question means? It means they had already recognized Jesus as Lord. What shall we do? They asked. Then Peter said to, to them, Repent. These are beautiful words, by the way. Today, I often tell people you should preach more repentance when you evangelize. Nowadays, people no longer preach repentance. They say, do you know that Jesus died for your sins? And in Poland, every person knows that. You would have to be incredibly ignorant not to know this story. We are taught about it at church and at Sunday school from a very young age. But remember, but Peter says to them, Repent. Christians are afraid to tell people to repent. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every one of you be baptized. So we see that first there is repentance and then there is baptism. The order is very important here. Before you get baptized, you need to be born again of God's Spirit. You need to repent. Christening of babies, therefore, is not baptism. It's not baptism because children did not get born again of God's Spirit. How could a baby get born again if it barely knows how to suck breast? The baby knows nothing more. It is two months old or even less. Children are christened when they are eight days old. Do you know why it is done on the eighth day? Because, you know, if we follow the old rules, the Jewish circumcision was done on the eighth day. And infant baptism is a replica of this circumcision. Such a silly idea. Just as the one with the priest gown having 33 buttons in the Catholic Church, because of the number of years Jesus lived. Everything is totally crazy there. When you look at the, those people, they are seriously mentally disturbed, you understand? This seriously requires pharmacological treatment, in my opinion. So we see, first there is repentance, and then baptism. So, when do they baptize people in all the Protestant churches that focus on baptism? When a person repents and gets born again, and only then. So, it involves repentance, otherwise you wouldn't be able to get born again. There is no new birth without it, it just won't happen. 
We talked about it in previous lessons. A crucial condition for the new birth is repentance. What is repentance? It is recognizing that your life so far had all been wrong. I have been wrong. It doesn't matter in what way I did that. Okay, whether you were a good person or a bad person who was wrong, whether you had a few academic titles or you were a street bum, it doesn't make a difference. Simply, I was lost. I was walking around the wilderness. Then I met Jesus, the living water, and I left the wilderness. So being born again involves repentance. Long story short, the Holy Spirit won't enter a man if he does not repent. Repentance happens when we agree with God that we were mistaken in our lives so far. Only at this moment can we activate point number two, that Jesus died for our sins. Listen, it's so simple, really. How could anybody accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior if they were not aware that they are a sinner? Really, why would such a person want a savior? Why would someone want a doctor if they thought they were healthy? Tell a healthy person they need to see a doctor and they will tell you, what for? I'm well. Because it's a doctor, you must get well. But no, I'm well. But you are sick. No, I'm healthy, etc. I used to do such stupid things myself. I would go and preach the good news to someone. I would push the gospel on them really hard. You know why? So that they would give their life to Jesus. I'd say, confess him as Lord and you will see what happens. And guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened at all. Why? Because that man believed he didn't need Jesus. Who needs a savior? Someone who has some sort of a problem, right? I need sozo. I need salvation if I am sick, then I need someone to rescue me. Jesus said, it is sick people who need a doctor, right? Those who understand they are sick, they know they need a savior. If someone does not recognize they are sick and that they are lost, why would they need Jesus? So the information that Jesus died on the cross means nothing for that person. So he died, so what? It's good, no problem. You understand? So we see that the baptism follows after the new birth. Second, what else is it? It is a prophetic symbol of death and resurrection. Let's read Colossians chapter 2, verse 12. You were buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. So what is baptism? Let's put it this way. When you got born again and you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you recognized that God is, you recognized that God is your Savior that he is your Lord and that he is your King. Now, listen what happens next. When you get baptized, it is God who recognizes you. This is amazing. God's word says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So our confession as acknowledging God is part of being born again, right? And now, now what is God's response? After you have done this prophetic gesture of baptism, God recognizes you before all his angels and before all the powers of darkness. 
And when you get immersed in that water and you come out of it, then God says, this is my man, my woman. <laughs> Earlier you confessed, my God. You confessed God before angels, before people, and before powers of darkness. Now when you get baptized, God says, he is mine, she is mine. That is why when Jesus was getting baptized, the sky parted and a voice spoke out. This is my beloved son. When did God publicly recognize Jesus? When Jesus was getting baptized. At the baptism at the Jordan River, the great Yahweh publicly acknowledged Jesus. As a result of this, the Holy Spirit materialized as a dove. You understand? Shocking. I can only imagine that situation. The shock for all the people there. God publicly acknowledging a man. Listen, you have acknowledged God. But when you get baptized, God acknowledges you. When you go underwater, you proclaim. It is your first prophecy. I am murdered together with Christ. When you come out of the water, it is your second prophecy. I am raised with Christ. When I was getting baptized, I invited uh, about 100 criminals I used to know in Warsaw to attend my baptism. I phoned them up saying, I'm going to get baptized. This is the address. You are welcome. About 20 of them came and they just sat there staring. But I walked proudly forward. There, where was I going? I was going to proclaim my own death and my resurrection together with Christ. Today, if the devil comes and tries to tell me, you know, God is not really that close to you, then I remind him of my baptism. I say, remember, you loser, you were at my baptism, yeah? You were so mad that I was acknowledging God and that he was acknowledging me. You were so angry. Baptism is a prophetic gesture. What happens later? Matthew chapter 3, verse 15. We see that John is about to baptize Jesus and says, it is me who needs baptism from you. But Jesus answers him, uh, permit it to be so now, for it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. So what is baptism? It is a first work of righteousness. It's the first proclamation. I am the righteous one of God. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Your new birth was an opening, you understand. Baptism puts a kind of sign on the door of your life that you belong to God. Now everyone publicly knows that you belong to God, to Christ. It's as if you moved to a new apartment, but there was no door plate. You already had been inside. You were accepted in heaven. Hallelujah. No one is going to kick, kick me out of this apartment. God has given me the apartment. He has paid all my debts. Hallelujah. But the moment you get baptized, a door plate is fixed on the door. It says, Artur Ceroński, son of the living God, lives here. And you are made public. You now have your Facebook profile, so to speak. Now everyone knows. You know, in some Muslim countries, you won't get harassed too much when you confess you are a Christian. But when you get baptized, they can actually kill you. Most ex-Muslims who get born again lose their life after their water baptism. They can come and slaughter entire families. Why? They say, it's all right if you became a Christian, you can now sit here with your Jesus, close your mouth, be quiet. But when you get baptized, you create havoc in spiritual reality. As if you kick the hornet's nest in the spirit. Often people start to experience oppression. We often saw people being delivered from demons as soon as we put them in, into water. Demons just left them at that instant. Others walked into water and got immediately baptized in the Holy Spirit. There was uh, once a guy who had spent many years in prison and during baptism, all his tattoos ran down. The water became blue and people repented on their knees. Seriously, baptism is not a ritual, you know. Christians made it into a ritual. And Protestants often ask questions like, 
have you already been baptized? Have you already been baptized? Once I was teaching on the foundations of faith and I met a person who was a Christian and God baptized many years before. And now she asked me, please baptize me again. I baptized that girl again because she said, when I was getting baptized, I was not born again. This wasn't real baptism because baptism comes after repentance. Anything that happened before repentance does not carry the value of baptism. It means nothing, you know, absolutely nothing. It's just some sort of ritual. But baptism is not a ritual as in now we will get baptized and receive a Bible with the church's stamp and declaration at the back and now you are with us. This is stupid. This is just sick. Baptism is a man's prophetic voice. You know, I was almost late for my baptism because the devil would do all kinds of things to stop me. I had to stop a taxi driver in the middle of the street, shouting at him, drive me there, drive me there. I jumped into the car and he drove me to the train station because I had missed my bus to, to take me there. I had no car, so this taxi driver, instead of going somewhere else, he took me there so I could catch a train to get to my baptism on time. In baptism, God brings you to the surface, so to speak. You become visible. A person who got born again of God's Spirit, but has not been baptized, is not properly seen in the spiritual reality. They are not visible. So, baptism, according to Matthew 3.16, is God acknowledging you. And the last thing... We read in 1 Peter 3, verses 21-22. We are going to read this out as this is very important. It describes the flood and the Ark of the Covenant. The flood was a prophetic picture of baptism. Do you know that everything that happened in the Old Testament reflects this uh, in the spiritual reality of the New Testament. What was seen physically in the Old Testament now can be spiritually seen in the New Testament. So the flood was a picture of baptism. It was drowning what was old and bringing up what was new. Uh, this is why Peter wrote about it. The Ark, in these verses, the Ark is a picture um, of baptism. It says that now saves you also. Notice this. We have the word sozo again, which means that baptism rescues us. So baptism is some key that opens a new threshold of life, another part of Sozo, because the first part of Sozo meant that you were accepted into heaven. You don't need baptism for that. But there is another part of Sozo, the next area of salvation, which you cannot enter in any other way but through baptism. If you don't get baptized, you will never achieve certain things in the kingdom, never. And it says here, which now saves us, not the removal of the filth of the flesh but the prayer for a good conscience towards God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ listen to me baptism is your prayer of faith for a good conscience what is a good conscience it is a conscience that is beyond condemnation if you understand the baptism correctly you will never again feel condemned it will simply get out of your system. The devil will never be able to condemn you because at your baptism, you ask God in faith for a good conscience, that your conscience would never be defiled, that it would be as sharp as a razor. This is what prayer for a good conscience means. As you are getting baptized, you asked for it and he heard you because he always hears you. So now you have a good conscience and then what happens? You fall. And now this is how I make use of baptism. 
Today, if I ever fall, either in my soul or in my flesh, my conscience is so constructed that I don't ever feel condemned. Not at all. You can ask my wife about it. She says to me, whenever you fall, after 15 minutes, you are ready to go, full of the Holy Spirit. You're ready to minister to people. You can preach the gospel straight away. Do you understand? I may sin in my soul, and in 15 minutes, I am ready to heal the sick, cast out demons, and preach the gospel. I don't lose an ounce of anointing in my life. How is that possible? Because I have a good conscience. I cannot be condemned. Look, even one hour spent condemning yourself is so destructive. If it lasts one whole day, you're already in trouble. And a few months, after a few months, you require a complete spiritual readjustment. You know, when I look at people who are continually under condemnation in different aspects, they come back like beaten dogs. I say, where have you been? And he says, I was ashamed. For three months? I'll tell you what happened. You felt so condemned that you accept, accepted a lie from the devil that if you'd already sinned and done those things, then you can now just as well continue sinning and go back to the world. So for three months you stayed in the world because you considered yourself condemned. You considered yourself, yourself a son who is condemned, or maybe you even questioned your salvation, you questioned your new birth, you just gave in to sin, just like an alcoholic gives in to alcoholism. He drinks one glass and thinks, oh, I've already fallen off the wagon, now I can continue drinking. I always say, because of one glass? But this is not a problem. You don't have to go on a bender. You don't have to start drinking now. So, water baptism is a prayer to God for a good conscience. We've seen that the baptism is a command. Uh, we've seen that it comes after repentance, uh, therefore baptism is not spiritually viable if the person has not been born of God's Spirit. In such a case, this is not a real baptism. Secondly, baptism is a prophetic symbol of Jesus' death and resurrection, a prophetic symbol of you dying with Christ and getting born again together with Christ, a prophetic gesture. Thirdly, it is God acknowledging you. When you get baptized, he acknowledges you before all the angels and the entire hell. He says, this is my son, this is my daughter. We've also seen that it is the first work of righteousness. It starts all the other works. Often when people tell me they want to serve with me, I ask, and have you been baptized? No, then get baptized and we will talk about serving because this is the first work of righteousness. I will not talk to you about evangelizing until you get baptized. And finally, baptism is a prayer to God for a good conscience. So ensuring that we will be immune to feeling condemned. That is why Paul says that in spite of falling many times in his life, he thanks God that the law of the Spirit is greater than the law of sin in his body and that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So this is the deal with the baptism.